This looks like a typical school trip. 250 year seven pupils descend on one of the great stately homes of England, Chatsworth House in Derbyshire. But it isn't just a day out. It's the culmination of a radical experiment, one which sees traditional subject divisions abandoned, the end of the one-hour lesson, and teachers working in a completely different way. When we first discussed it last year, we talked about um, an integrated curriculum where one teacher would be taking a class all day. Uh, it, was, it was first produced as, as all day, every day, and that we would teach every subject. And myself, I was a bit sort of flabbergasted by that, because I'm a music teacher and I'm a musician. And um, I was a bit sort of scared, really, by the idea of having to teach history and geography. The idea is called C3. Each half-term, pupils tackle a different topic, in this case, Chatsworth House, and use that one topic as a focus for working across a whole range of subjects. That covers all of the arts, dance, drama, music um, and visual arts, history, geography and RE, food technology and um, resistant materials. As part of the project, pupils are tasked with making a promotional video about Chatsworth. So using some of the things that I've just shown you, I would like you to put some clips in yourself, use some transitions, and I'll show how to put some text in in a bit. OK, so if anyone has any problems, stick your hands up and we'll come round and you can do what I've just asked you to do. The sound effects and the video effects. Video effects are working together because, like, say we've got like a star, like a fairy coming mm -hmm. onto the screen, we're using the xylophone to make it sound more like a stick. Mm -hmm. They're asked to design a board game based on life in the 17th century. So our learning objective, can someone read the learning objective for me, please, Dominic? Explore the hardships of the 16th century poverty by playing fellow students' games. Fantastic, well done. The first task for today is play your own game and check that it works. When you pick a card, this one says you, you, like, you murdered a sheep so you have to go to jail. So then you'll go to jail and then you'll miss a turn or something. We based it around the cholera outbreak in the 16th century and 19th century. So what you've got to do, if you're the people, you've got to get to the factories and back to the house without getting caught by the cholera. And they need to write a piece of music inspired by Chatsworth. Right, now today we're going to do three things. By the end of the two-hour session, you will all... Working together in twos, some of you work by yourself, but you will all control the keyboards. You will also all have composed a piece of music based on one of the features that we'll see in Chatsworth next week. We're doing, like, music for the, wa the waterfall fountain at Chatsworth House. So we're trying to put together some ideas to, like, and then record over them so they make, like, a track together to, like, go with the music. I'm doing the water sculpture because I thought it would be a good idea because the tune what I've chose it because the yellow the yellow bar inside the water sculpture well it opens the leaves and the outside of it so it's like that really. But that's not all. The way in which the teaching and learning is arranged is radically different. So 40% of the children's time is in C3. And during C3, they spend time with their base group tutor. And they also have um, two two-hour subject specialist rotations in a week. So their week begins with a half-day session in their base group, where they have a base group teacher. Then in the afternoon of that whole day, they have a subject specialist rotation. 
then they have another two hour subject specialist rotation and then they have two more hours at the end of the week with their base group tutor. Why is such change necessary? I suppose in common, again, with many schools, we were concerned with what happened at Key Stage 3, the, the traditional dip, the disengagement of boys, the lack of challenge maybe for some gifted and talented students. And again, perhaps a recognition that the Key Stage 3 curriculum was, was in fact not meeting the needs of the children. The school wanted to reform its Key Stage 3 curriculum and used a major reorganisation of its buildings as a launch pad. Staff also drew on research by the Royal Society of Arts. They did a lot of work towards the end of, of, of the 1990s to see what skills, what employers wanted, and then came up with what they saw as a series of competencies. And so the competencies are relationships, working with people, managing information, citizenship, and, and it was a question of how do you match those competencies with delivering a very content-heavy national curriculum. And, of course, you can't. Something has, has to give, and... and we took the view that preparing children for this very changing world uh, and, and delivering these competencies, whilst being aware of what the national curriculum demanded, was actually serving them better for the future. The QCA picked up on the project and incorporated it as part of its work on wholesale reform of the KS3 curriculum. That gave it great legitimacy uh, for staff, but um, it wasn't, it, it wasn't a totally straightforward process. We gave guarantees to colleagues that at the end of the year, if they didn't like it, we would change their timetable. I have to say that here we are now in, in March and nobody wants to move. So let's see how it works in action. So we're here today uh, to look at some footage of Chatsworth House that I've been out and filmed. And we're going to use it to construct a two-minute video where you'll try and sell Chatsworth House to me and Miss. You've got to imagine you go into an estate agent and you want to buy Chatsworth House, and this is the video that they're going to show you as an example of what it looks like. The C3 curriculum is all about being creative. I mean, that's the sort of base core that we see with it. And putting technology in front of um, the students really does give them a base to sort of leap off to be creative with it. Um, what do you think we should put in the sheet? I like taking turns, and instead of one, like, two people just telling the other one what to do, we'll, like laying each other work together, together. And advising on what we could put in. How we but it's really work. the person who's doing it and makes all the decisions. All right, let's just have a little bit of a recap about what we're doing and about how this fits into our topic. So, what are we doing about this term, Rianne? Chatsworth, good girl, fantastic. That was a bit obvious, wasn't it? Okay, we're doing about Chatsworth, and what centuries are we looking at, George? The 16th and the 19th. The 16th century. And I'm going to do my cheating way of writing it. And the 19th century. Excellent. Well done. It's about the children enjoying what they're learning and learning through the topic. So it's lots and lots of doing, lots of creating, lots of making, lots of playing games, getting them actively involved so no one can sit in the corner of the classroom and switch off. The idea is to get everyone involved. Pay bills. No, inherit AP from parent who died. First of all, like Monopoly, we started off giving £200, but then we realised that they didn't even have that much in those days. So we had to narrow it down to 20. I think we've still got a lot to learn, but there's, we've learned quite a bit. But what I'd like you to imagine is this, that the estate of the Duke of Devonshire have decided that they would like to set up some hidden speakers in certain parts of the garden, and they'd like to play music to go with that particular part of the garden. So what we're going to do is think about music that would go with these three features, with the revelation feature, the maze, which is in the middle of the garden, and war horse, which is this really big, impressive bronze sculpture. One of the really good things is the fact that, say, that, that music I was doing today links in completely with what the students have been doing in other areas. But the students coming to the lesson are kind of anticipating that there's going to be something to do with Chatsworth, because the danger there is and they go, the oh, no, again. not Chatsworth again. But I think the way around that and the way we're just going to go around it is to get variety and variety of approaches. So they're coming in, but 
you know, if it was all death by worksheet, it would, it would kill the whole thing stone dead and it would be not creative teaching and learning. Um, so when they come into the lesson, the, um, they, they, there's a subconscious, if you like, connection that the students will be making. And let's have a look, please, at the one that says Revelation. Uh, which six notes are we going to play? C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp and A sharp. Right, very good. Does anybody know what it means, F sharp? How do you play F sharp or G sharp or A sharp on the keyboard? Um, they're the black keys. The black keys, right. Which direction do I go from the white key? Right or left? Right. Right, OK. One. Yeah. After all the preparation in digital video, in designing a board game and in composing music, now it's time for the trip to Chatsworth. Will it all come to life? Well, the point of the visit to Chatsworth, it's a bit like you're going to go to another country, but you'd want to know something about it. And what I'm hoping is that when they get to Chatsworth and they walk around the gardens, somehow it's going to impact on them more. You know, when they see they've been doing a composition based on the maze, and then they actually go in the maze, somehow it deepens the experience. And it'll be a lot of fun, yeah, particularly if it rains, because there's nowhere to eat your sandwiches if it rains. <laughs> if it rains, we have to huddle on the coaches. <laughs> It does help to have studied it because there's just so much you know and you know the story behind the house. It's just really good to see what you've been studying, to just walk up a corridor and look at the paintings and say, oh, that's the first duke. I don't think it would be so big. The paintings are dead big and all over the ceilings. I didn't know there'd be paintings all over the ceilings as well. I think the fountains are best because they're just like really big and I've never seen big ones. I think the maze and all the gardens and the fountains and just everything really, because it's just all amazing. It's dead big and pretty. <laughs> Why are they all naked? Again, it's fashionable. It's fashionable at the time. Fashionable to watch. No, the people wouldn't have been naked, but the, the fashion of the time was to have naked sculptures. They've been asking me intelligent questions. They've been asking me questions around the subject with the knowledge that they already have. So, yeah, I know that they've taken things in and I can answer them from what I've read and it's, it's been good. Yeah, it's consolidated nicely. And the verdict on C3. Of course, once you made the decision to jump off the cliff and start, you know, gliding outwards, um, you know, there are times when people panic. You know, they stepped out of the boat and suddenly find they can't walk on the water. You know, you've got to... And, and it's that sustained thing that we're still working at, I feel. <laughs>